Welcome to the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Welcome to ITSP Magazine. Knowledge is power, now more than ever. All right, we are trying to redefine in society again. That's uh, it's a hard task, but I, I'm not giving up. I'm trying to place our society into connected. Let's say con reconnect society with uh, with the digital world and technology. And I think there is a lot of people that are refusing that. Um, kind of like the old days, maybe are. Nothing is as good as it used to be. I don't know. That's kind of now I sound like a grandparent, but there are other people that are born actually into a world that is already full of technology, smartphone, the internet. Um, I'm kind of consider myself lucky because I've kind of in between. I've experienced the analog world as a as a teenager in the '80s, and uh, and then then I deep dive into the digital world and that goes with the internet computer but also it goes with music because if you know me i i like music i'm never gonna pass an opportunity to talk about that and so today i'm excited about this conversation with uh charles ellingson ellingson actually um straight from norway all the way over there uh while i'm in l.a right now and I'm excited to have this conversation about technology, music, NFTs, Web.3, cryptocurrency. But mostly, I think we're going to talk about music because Charles is a former musician. Can you ever be ever a former musician? I think you're always going to. If you're a musician, you're always going to be a musician. Uh, but. We'll, we'll dig into that as well. So <laughs> before I get too annoying with this, Charles, welcome to the show. Um, please introduce yourself, and uh, and then uh, I'm looking forward to have this conversation. Well, thank you for having me. I've been um, looking to forward to to be here, Marco. Um, you may not know this about me, but I've been listening to your podcast and I love what, it, what this whole thing represents. Uh, I think it's we're touching into very deep but interesting and and needed subjects that we need to, to get more light on. And you inviting me here to connect to to talk about NFTs, the role in music and well, we will touch into all of these these subjects, but it's it's highly interesting, and and I'm hyped for it. Well, as you said, I'm Charles. I'm the CEO of Unity Network. Um, short story, uh, I founded Unity Network in in 2021, uh, where we are now the, um, developing an NFT based ticketing system for um, both professional and private event organizers. Um, we're trying to create, basically what we are doing is, is we're trying to create um, a platform that is easy to use and inclusive for both artists and event organizers, uh, where everyone's invited, basically. Prior to being, being blessed with the position I have now at Unity Network, um, I have worked with many things. Um, I've been uh, invested in blockchain in the blockchain industry since 2014. I've been a Web3 advisor since 2016. Um, I've been doing HR um, in as an investor, also in some projects, and management and sales, of course. Which is which is sales is something I have a small heart for. But since my early, as basically from my 20s and earlier I was my heart was with music um, I found an interest in music from from a very early age um, and and I always borrowed guitars because I couldn't afford myself one uh, myself but 
when I was 13, you, in Norway, you were able to start working when you're 13. And I started working on my birthday that morning. I stood up at 6 a.m. in the morning and sold newspapers to to try to to get um, to to get afford to afford a, a guitar, basically. But when I was 14 years old, and, and newspapers selling newspapers in Norway as a 13 year old boy, it's it's not you don't earn gold. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so so when I was 14 I was blessed with my sister who bought me my first L basically electric guitar um, that that began my journey within the music industry basically and it always stays with you like I said at the beginning you know when the, when you are when you love music uh, you don't want to stop it and and that's kind of like uh, I think it could be the, the the title of this episode. It's going to be "Don't Stop the Music," and and I think it was suggested in <laughs> in what uh, in what your bio, bio was was saying. So, um, how can we connect all of this, uh, which is the, the love for technology, your marketing, selling experience, and and your passion for music? And I, I think we can. We can. We, we should have this conversation rotate right around that, which is what you do with your new company. And I feel like maybe it's one of those things that makes you get up early every morning with the passion of doing something, kind of like what you did the first time that you went and sold newspaper for your birthday. So I, that, that tells a lot about who you are. So what what was the catalyst to say, I can put all of this together. I, I can connect my passions and, and make a business out of it, but also maybe change the way that society work in a certain way. Maybe the musician approach their business, their own copyrights and their future in a certain way. So um, I know it's a big question, but start wherever you want, Blake. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, this conversation is is now very interesting, of course. Um, well, let me think of it this way: building a band is very fun. Um, before going into this solo uh, venture of mine um, with uh, writing songs, I used to have a band where we did cover songs. You know, Iron Maiden, Guns N' Roses, Goo Goo Dolls. Oh. You just you just named my two favorite bands. If you put Black Sabbath in there, you got it all. <laughs> oh yeah, they are great. So so we had we had all of this and putting a band together. You sometimes someone isn't cut for it, or they have too much school. But at least when I was 16, 17, 18 years old. But having auditions, creating the band, wow, that's magic. You have auditions, you jam together to see if you're a good fit. It's like dating, basically. And you get to know know people and form very, very strong ba uh, form, also bonds. You know, music is, is, is played by the heart, first and foremost. And then you listen with your ears. And, and when you create something, you just jam together, creating medleys. It's magical. And... Being an entrepreneur, creating Unity Network is not that different. Um, we have interviews, Web3 workshops. Um, we get to know people from around the world, having meetings with people from Belgium. Yesterday, I had this morning from Germany, and now having this interview with you, it's, it's, it's so interesting for me, and I'm drawn to it. I think much because of the music industry, I'm drawn to all the people, to other, um, yeah, to basically to this. And the music industry, much like the web free industry, is, is very social and fun, but it's, it's quite tough also. Um, when we saw the shift from web one, you know, you remember those old uh, HTML websites and emails we <laughs> you couldn't change the text size <laughs> um, to the web two, where we got social media facebook and and the other big companies like google which 
match searching much easier and connecting much easier and online ticketing services as well. Um, this was great because now we had a bigger audience. We could attack a bigger audience as artists, as, as musicians. If we had to um, have a concert in our local pub area on a Saturday evening, we could put, post this on Facebook. And it was groundbreaking. I, I remember I had Facebook since 2008 because of the music. I didn't care about connecting with my um, with my friends was at school because we just we just rang the door, um, and I think now we are going to a different stage, the third stage, which is should be for people going from one web one to web two. I think the, going from web two to web three should be experienced in a positive way for the artist that is involved. With the added layer of Web3, we can secure smart tickets uh, as NFTs. Um, we can have NFTs worth one song, like a single. Remember those singles you bought on CDs? And you can basically sell a ticket. But hey, you get the new world premiere of my song baked into your NFT ticket, and it will be available after the concert. You cannot do that with many of the other services because you would that then own the song because it's an NFT. I think it makes it even more convenient and easier to host a gig, but it also makes it more convenient and easier for guests to be involved. So let me let me stop you because this I already know this is going to be a conversation that can go in a lot of different direction, even if we stay in the realm of music. But maybe for our audience, you kind of define very quickly, you know, web 1.0, then web 2.0, which, you know, we could tell social media and, and, and maybe applications and the smartphone rolling in and, and having apps and API and stuff. But then you got the web 3.0. You already threw there like NFTs and maybe independence from this bigger website. But could you maybe summarize the, the way that you you would explain web 3.0 to someone that it's not as tech savvy as as you are? Like explain it to. I don't know, one of your friends or grandma or, you know, as to say, like, what is, in your opinion, the essence of Web 3.0? So I'd I like to, um, to to explain it to, to, if I explain it to my mother, and she's, now she's involved. She knows all. <laughs> she's, okay. really, she's really, like, well, my son's in Web 3. Now it's just official. <laughs> yeah. So you, <laughs> you may say that uh, the internet, Web 1, the original internet, is a connection of computers. The cloud is another person or entity's computer, what you call the cloud. Web 3 is the connection of application and services, where we have entered this Web 3 space. Web 2 space was entered with the industry in focus. They, they saw their shot and took it. That's why we're having Facebook and these big entities. But Web3 was made by the people. So that's why we're reading about people being crypto billionaires or have suddenly, oh, I forgot about 500 bitcoins. I, I didn't know they were supposed to be worth anything. And on the other side, you have people that have used, um, have, should have used something that is secure and open as Web3, but didn't have it. So you have going back to the original is you have connected computers, which is the, the internet, but Web3 is connected services and it's open. All transactions should be open and available on the internet. Um, a good example of this use case is if you are going to give some, something to Red Cross. If you give $100 to Red Cross, where does that money go? You don't know where it goes, if it comes to um, bring life or it, it goes to, to the organization itself, which both is good. But 
it would be amazing if you gave them a hundred dollars and you can just follow that dollars from wallet to wallet and see wow they bought new shelters for shelter dogs um this is something web three can do and this is just the tip of the iceberg when we're talking nfts many will think mm, art this is web three right. art sold <laughs> but no web three is nfts is is it's so much more than that. It's just the tip of the iceberg. In India, they had this police station where um, many of the police reports weren't um, secure. They could be altered. Um, they weren't delivered correctly and, and other things. So what they did, they began this project, um, NFT police report. They cannot be altered. You can support, uh, basically um, track from whoever uh, files the police report, anonymously, of course, and see where the police report lies. And if it had been altered, which is kind of impossible with contracts online, but if it has been, it's, it shows on the Web3. So it's Web3, but with tracing. <laughs> It's it's sound to me, and I use this as an example sometimes. Is make make business more accountable because it you you could track pretty much anything with that, right? You can track even this this food label really does what it says it does. Like this ingredient, where do they come from? So to the excess, you you can make everybody in the chain accountable and you apply that as you say to the red cross to the police to food and uh, environment you know are you really as environmental friendly as you as you say that you are for example and and then we can now bring it back to to the music so here's what i'm thinking since when i was a kid you always think like the band get the record label deal and then they're done. They're like, yep, now we're successful. We got that record deal. But then, unless you're the really big band, if you want to say band or singers or artists in general, you get a margin of that because the record label takes a lot of it. And they kind of own you <laughs> back in the days. And then I think with the Web 2.0, people started to be more in control of their success. But there was also, I think, a problem where as, as you and your band were advertising maybe your show on Facebook and maybe somebody taped the show, video recorded it, and they, you get hundreds, thousands, millions of views on now TikTok, maybe not back then, but it would be Facebook or YouTube. Then at that point, the record company come to you and say, oh, now that you're successful, I'm going to give you a contract because I know you can already you already have an audience. I don't need to discover you. You've already been discovered. But I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, the result didn't change. Meaning, once you get the label sign, they own your wallet pretty much, and you get a residual of the contract with that. So, what's the vision at this point of an artist that understand the power and the potential of the the cryptocurrency and the and the, the digital contract and the crypto contract and the web 3.0 what is really that can happen in owning and promoting yourself and not being owned by the record label yeah that's that's a very good remark and <laughs> um <laughs> But you've done your research. Uh, we actually, Evicom came from, is, is inspired, uh, inspired by the food and, and market, basically. Um, WeChain is something that track flour, how much milk, how much yeast, how much water is, it's, is in your bread when you buy it. You can basically track where the water is from. Where the flower is from. And, and this is some inspiration for Evicom, for our Evicom. If you're an artist and you have, let's say you're, you're big, as you say, you made it. You have many on TikTok, people following you. 
and they want to make make you have an appearance uh, in their city. Basically, what what a, um, an event organizer does for you is is create the event and make you go on stage and and host backstage. Often there's food, good food, something to drink, and you're having fun because you're an artist. You 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 don't think about the money if you're in love with the industry of music. You want to create. You want to you want to move people. You want to share the love of what you're doing. And you when when you get noticed, it's it's hard it's easy to forget that it's actually an industry it's it's money we're talking about and i think that many record companies take advantage of this because it's profitable if we were to have blockchain and NFT baked in in every step of the way of the artist even signing the contract couldn't be altered and it's online and whatever you could see if someone's selling um same mark if you you have a cup that it's your face on it and holding a guitar and your name and people buying the marco coffee cup coffee mug you will get a portion of that every time someone buys something on the blockchain it's registered and if we have basically um showing some um royalties to the to the um, artist, it should be at any point of sale. If you buy a Justin Bieber cup, um, he should get some money from each sale everywhere. And this is made possible with NFTs. Also, some interesting add on is if you are having a, um, a concert, as I said, with, with the release of a song, it can be connected to the NFTs, but you can also have connections with. Um, plus one friend, um, hotel deals, and, and and so on to to bring in more people towards your show. If we think about the artist, and this make marketing also more clever and a bit cheaper, so the more money can go towards the artist. And with Web three, we can see how much the event organizer gets, how much the venue owner gets, uh, how much the marketeers get. Um, sales, how much the ticket service get, and how much the artist gets. And if we had a look, if we had insight in this today, I can assure you that the artists that are rich means that you have a manager that is even more richer. And I think history is full of that. Like, you know, like <laughs> artists that then they break up with their longtime manager because they find out that it was kind of appropriating of money that maybe wasn't really made by him by that person um so but as, as you think this as an artist you, you said something at the beginning that you're like the artist doesn't think much about money he thinks about the art it's kind of like the artist that is a painter like a lot of artists painters they die poor because they're not maybe commercially savvy and smart there is others that actually made a lot of money during their lifetime like picasso for example but many other they didn't they didn't have that that edge and then their value goes up after they're dead but they didn't get much during their time life now how easy is for the person that is a musician to spend his life learning an instrument putting the band together writing and then say, well, I go with a record company with a manager because then they take care of the business side and I can keep doing what I love to do. And when you present this contract technology, uh, crypto and all of that and creating material that is creative, like I can attach perks when you buy a ticket, maybe I'll get you a T-shirt sign or, or a digital NFT that you can have as a memory of the Guns N' Roses concert or, or Beyonce or whatever you like. But aren't you as an artist still depending from someone that knows all of that? Because do you want to dedicate yourself in learning all that stuff? How easy is it? 
and do artists really care? No, I, I think much of being an artist is, is that it comes naturally. It, it, and it comes so, it, it happens so slowly all the time. You learn to play guitar, it's fun. You master to play the guitar. You master to play some drums. You meet some in the industry because you play this, well, let's say at parties or in the woods, whatever, and meet people who, who have the same interests. You form a band, and this goes slowly. It's, this is five, six years, you know, and you're doing good. You find a lead singer. He's amazing or she's amazing. Um, and they learn to play guitar too, the singers. And, and we're just having fun. And someone says, hey, you should do a gig one time. I would call on this. You should get money and, out of this. <laughs> yeah. And then it happens. It's, it's so slow. It's so slow paced. But like for Justin Bieber, who was discovered on YouTube, because people who is, who is discovered, it, it isn't like earlier, they went in with investments and made sure to sell or put the CD records all over the place. In Norway, we need to have it in Canada. We need to have it in South Asia. It's not like that anymore because of the internet. You get famous, even if it's planned or not. And I, I think it's a beauty and a curse because people see green when you get famous and you have no way of tracking how much they take of your cut without the crypto industry. And this is, this is where EVCOM and, and, and e NFT ticket um services come in hand because we that service can be in a middleman with you and your manager and the venue so they register at the end of the day a contract which is the code for for crypto basically for the nft ticket whenever a ticket is sold you get ten dollars they get ten dollars each and everyone is is it, it's fair price. So it's it's fair price, basically. But yeah, it, it happens so slowly, but success today happens overnight. So it's hard to get your mind through it. <laughs> so, so I guess, again, I go back to my question, which is, as you are a, an artist and you're building your, your expertise, your, your art, whatever that is, how do you also get into your mind that you have to project yourself in the future, hoping that you're going to make it and be ready for when you're going to make it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how yeah. do you know when is the time to get into protecting your, you know, your, your, your property, your your art before it goes out there and is on YouTube's and is on, uh, you know, DJ that may take a sample sampling of your song and put it in another song and and you have no control. So my my point is, it seems hard if I put myself in the shoes of an artist to to say, I don't want to learn that. I'm gonna. How am I gonna do that? Well, yeah, it's it's put your mind around it, wrap your mind around it. Yeah, it's it's hard. Um, I don't know. I haven't been famous in music, <laughs> but I have known someone who is a good friend of mine. He was amazing on guitar. How also he he did well, and he just quit because it wasn't for him. He didn't earn any money, and he needed to have a an income. He got a kid, he had a wife, uh, and he was so talented. I mean, and I had this other man, um, a good friend of mine. He, he, he's an event organizer for bigger events, and they don't earn much either. Also, of course, they take home some more than the artist. That's for sure. But in the end, I think it's the the marketing and uh, ones that host the venue, of course, the property that earns the most. <laughs> Uh, cash from it you know every um most event are uh, events are um, relied on, on people volunteering to do work and it's a reason for it um so i think either event organizers so hosting bigger events when hearing their words sold out they aren't prepared and we have seen that 
time and time again. Same with the artist. You, you have seen artists go from 100 to zero because their mind is crazy because we as human, I don't think, is built for success overnight. But those who are, well, if you have a band and remember, let's say Guns N' Roses is a good example. They were prepared. They have been sitting on, on, on records for a year producing CDs and they sent it out everywhere in, in the world and did market it on every uh, CD store. Of course, people would buy it. It was planned. But today it's not planned. So that's it's hard to wrap your mind around it, how to prepare for it. But I think the best way to prepare for it now is to learn about new technologies that can help you and assist you in your way towards success and make sure that you as an artist or event organizer is paid equally or what you deserve. I'd like to pick your your brain into something that you're discussing right now, which is event. So there are physical events and then, you know, that there is the metaverse. Uh, I don't want to talk about the metaverse, but I want to talk about the opportunity of monetize from your art without being in the system of getting 10 big trucks to go from one city to another or having your own Boeing 747 <laughs> when you're big and or getting to the van, as you see in a lot of stories where the band goes around, you know, unloading the drums, unloading the bass, unloading all of that. And do you see the, the Web 3.0 offering opportunities to, um, to, to offer alternatives? to artists to, to monetize with their art. So instead of just being a YouTube video where sure you can make money because advertisers are going to stick, you know, and add it at the beginning and, and the end of, of your video. What about virtual concert? What about virtual session or how many other ways you think that could pop up with some creative mind and, and the right technology? Oh, it's 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 quite interesting with virtual concerts and how they work today. Um, I don't think they work as well for the artist as they do for the actual hosting platform like YouTube. If you have again, <laughs> again, it works for the for the venue, but it doesn't work for the artist. Yeah, and but vir virtual concerts is. I think that. Why host on YouTube when you can host yourself? Um, why experience to have um, someone earn from commercials on your content when you can just, you can record your uh, content. A, a camera is, is very available today. You can rec record, live record your concert, connect it to something within Web3 or even just um, an open source or more open source, more people-friendly system where you sell your content directly to your users. The problem is that how are you going to be discovered? So this is something that is more for people that is discovered or can market themselves because every step of the way would be on your hands. Well, you have started a band, you have learned how to play guitar, drums, whatever, and you have done all of that. Of course, you can market yourself. Remember when in, in, in the early 20s, I, um, we were running around time in a town, um, picking up flyers, stip uh, stapling uh, flyers up for people to get noticed that we have a concert this Friday. And we have all of this social media. But with NFTs, you can have an admission to your concert, which is playing live at one certain point of time on a website like EVCOM. Uh, where you just scan your phone to watch the camera or uh, connect your wallet. And as soon as the connection is secured, you see that this, this ticket is secure, you are able to enter. And by the sales statistics, the, uh, also the, the artist knows how many people who will attend. With live YouTube, you aren't able to know how and beforehand. But you can say it's 
it's better to have the choices and and the responsibility yourself but you need to have the knowledge as well so it's easier with uh, with youtube but we need to learn toward learn to lean towards the future and the new technology and and capture it instead of just letting it slip yeah i mean it's uh it's something that it's like any other passion that you have, you know. As I say, if you can, if you can, if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. But, but you kind of need to, right? You need to monetize that. So, you know, it's great to be an artist. It's great to be a writer. Because as you're talking about a musician, I'm thinking writers. I mean, writers they have the same, the same issue. They depend on a publisher, and then they need to be on a digital, you know like Amazon, and then if you do the audio, yeah, sure, I can do the audio, but how am I going to sell it? So you always end up with the big distributor. Is uh, you know, maybe the Barnes & Noble, maybe Tower Record, which, you know, doesn't exist anymore here in, in the U.S., but I've seen it in Japan. So, hey, if you want Tower Record, you can find it there. And and be ahead of the time. So you, you need to have some kind of a business mind or maybe – Maybe you need someone that that has that expertise. So, to to end these, I mean, I would like to talk about more like how technology is changing the way that that somebody is an artist. And maybe I'll have you back if you want to come back to go deeper into this conversation. But to wrap this one here, um, if you have some advice, maybe for young musicians that are just starting now, you know, you're that 15 years old, you that get the guitar and want to make career uh, out of his passion. Um, looking at what the possibilities are now with technology and web 3.0. I mean, what, what would be your advice to, to this, uh, to these people? Well, if I'm talking to my 15-year-old self, <laughs> I should say that. Um, but from the future, well, yeah. you have made it so far. Uh, it has been tough. The music industry is tough. But it's going to get a lot tougher if you don't uh, validate yourself and and put a price on whatever you do. So, um, well, I did myself a favor and started Unity Network and trying to solve the problem with EVCOM. Um, for the future generation, generation, learn how to, to use this new tech because it's made by the people, for the people, um, to make sure that everyone is, is treated fair. And EVCOM will be that, just that. It will be just a middleman handling your transactions. And you get a full overview of whatever, whenever, to all artists and event organizers in the world to solve exactly this problem we have discussed today. Cool. All right. So with, with that in mind, uh, I'm going to wrap this conversation. I want to thank you for being very open and bringing your story to the table and the, the reason why you got into this industry and, and to talk about where this industry may be going. We didn't talk about online ticket selling and maybe cyber attack and scalping and how I'm sure that cryptocurrency and crypto contract can avoid also that kind of issue. So again, maybe you'll come back and have another conversation with me, but I hope we made people think, um, I hope we made young artists and people that love music to realize that um, it, the over the success is not really, really overnight. It, it makes me laugh when people are like, "Oh, he just is a overnight success." No, this person's been working really hard on his art for many, many years, and then eventually, if you get that break, it seems like you just made it. But this is people that put blood and sweat and tears in 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 what they love. So, a big appreciation for that, and I think it will be just fair that they get the right amount of compensation out of that. So anything that comes to help that, it's welcome. And I I invite everybody to check the notes on this Redefining Society podcast because there will be 
a way to connect with Charles and maybe you have some ideas, maybe you have some questions and learn a little bit more about what he's, uh, he's doing. And if you have some comments, if you're a musician, you have your opinion on this or you're a technologist and you love music and you have other ideas that can go together with this, please leave a comment and uh, I'll pass it to Charles and he can, he can try to, to answer that. I'm sure it, uh, he will love that. So thank you very much, Charles. Thank you, Marco. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Take care. You too, man. We hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you learned something new and this story made you think, then share ITSP Magazine with your friends, family, and colleagues. If you represent a company, wish to associate your brand with our conversations, sponsor one or more of our columns. We hope you will come back for more stories and follow us on our journey. You can always find us at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society.